In a long December And there's a reason to believe Maybe this year will be better than the last So if you want next year to be better I'm going to give you the 23 mistakes to avoid in 2023 so that you can grow your business, make more money, and be happier as a photographer. I was gonna sing all the 23 mistakes that you should avoid in 2023, but I decided to just go ahead and talk instead. So, I'm gonna dive right into this list. Normally, I will give you a bulleted list of all the points I talk about, and then I will talk about them, and then I will recap with another bulleted list. But there's 23, and that's a lot. So instead, I'ma just dive right in. Hello, my name is Mike Lloyd. I am a professional photographer in Silicon Valley, California. I've been doing this for 12 years, teaching for 10 of those. And I didn't go to school for this. I have never taken a photography class. And I figured it all out as I went. I've made a lot of mistakes and I've learned a lot along the way. Also, teaching other photographers all of these things, I've learned other mistakes that people are doing and have sharpened my own game because of that. So I'm going to give you 23 mistakes to avoid in 2023, starting with number one. You are a business owner who happens to be a photographer. You are not a photographer who's trying to run a business because photographers are artists. That's what we do. We make art, we create art, we take beautiful pictures, we express ourselves through our photography. That's cool, but it doesn't make you money. I don't care how good you are with your camera, how much you love what you do, how expensive your gear is, that doesn't make you money. You need to be a business owner first and spend most of your time focusing on the business. That is what's going to allow you to make a living so that you can continue taking photos. Taking pictures won't make you money, which won't help you take more photos, but making money will help you be able to take more photos and continue doing this for a long, long time. Now you might be thinking, I don't want to run a business. I just want to take pictures. That's fine. The business has to be run by a business owner. So you can always partner up with someone if you don't want to do it. You can focus on the craft. They can run the business if you don't want to do it yourself. Number two, time management. This is huge. There is the illusion of busy. You're doing a ton of things and at the end of the day, nothing actually got done. You're like, how's that even possible? I was doing so much today because it was busy work. It wasn't actually productive activity. And time management is important because maybe you have kids or you work a full-time job or you're taking care of a loved one or any other possible thing that could take up your time. Maybe you also wanna have a day off and sleep and relax a little bit and have hobbies. You don't need to spend all of your time in the business. You shouldn't spend all of your time in the business. You will burn out. Trust me, I've been there. And managing your time is going to be invaluable. And that leads us into point number three. I'm gonna run a fingers real quick, so this is the last one I'm even gonna count on my fingers. <laughs> time blocking. This one has been a game changer for me. And what is time blocking? It is designating chunks of time throughout your week for specific tasks, as opposed to, cool, I'm gonna answer a couple emails, maybe make a call, edit photos a little bit, and then maybe I'll order a client album and then get in the Facebook group. You are bouncing around from task to task to task. And the energy required in our brains to go from one task to another, one thought process to another, uses a lot of energy and you are going to burn out more quickly in the daytime. So rather than doing that, I have designated shoot days, Mondays and Saturdays. I might have a little bit of office work in the morning, answering emails if I need to, but otherwise all I do is shoot on those days. My other days, I have time blocked off for creating social content batching these videos out for doing consults with clients and reveals and ordering albums. All of that stuff is blocked off into larger chunks of time. So I can just dedicate four hours into creating content. I can do two hours of album designing instead of bouncing back and forth between them. Number four, scheduling creative projects. This one is big because you are not a photographer who runs a business, you are a business owner who is a photographer. And when you get caught up in the day-to-day -day grind of running a business, it's too easy to lose sight of what got us here in the first place, our love of photography. So schedule creative projects. They won't just happen randomly or spontaneously, you gotta schedule them. And because you're time blocking, you can set aside time every month to do creative shoots. 
They can be new types of outfits, new pieces of furniture, go outside, try new lighting setups, anything that you wanna to do to stay creative as a photographer. Number five, avoid distractions in photos. If you wanna take a picture of a client with a guitar, I think that's amazing. You don't need this tuner up at the top, that's distracting. Uh, that is just one example. Maybe you have pieces of furniture in the background, art on the walls that takes away from the actual image. Adding things to a photo can be really cool. It can enhance the image, but I have found that removing every unnecessary thing from the scene is going to be way more powerful in creating beautiful images for your clients. You want the photos to focus on the client, not anything else in the room. Everything should complement the client, not share the spotlight. And in line with that, avoid cropping mistakes. Do a little research on where crop lines are when you crop your photos. You're like, I wanna do tight shots, I wanna do close-ups, that is amazing. Do not crop through eyes or through the neck, do not crop through joints like an elbow or a knee. Don't cut off fingertips or toes. Give yourself that extra room. So pay attention to where the crop lines are in the camera and avoid those mistakes. Not specializing. This one is huge. So many photographers when they get started, you know, build a website and they're like, cool. Uh, I shoot weddings and babies and boudoir and seniors and families and products and landscapes and architecture and travel and anything that'll stand in front of my camera, I don't even care. But that's like going to Fresh Choice or Hometown Buffet or Cracker Barrel or something and knowing that you can get a burrito and lasagna and sushi and pizza and pad thai in the same place. None of them are actually going to be good. It's like a Swiss army knife. None of the tools are actually good at what they do, but there's 50 tools on one, you know, Swiss army knife. So instead, be a specialist. And a lot of photographers argue. They're like, yeah, but if I only do boudoir, I'm missing out on all the family clients and all the high school senior clients and all of whatever. You can still shoot them. I shoot families. I shoot corporate work. I shoot high school seniors. I just really don't advertise it. But my boudoir clients have families. They have kids. They have jobs and they will hire me to do these other shoots that I can take at my own discretion. But think of like a brain surgeon. They're not sitting at home thinking, man, everyone who needs foot surgery, they could be hiring me right now. I could be making more money uh, operating on somebody's shoulder, but nope, I'm just focusing on the brain. I guess I'm not gonna make any money. Wrong, they specialize in brain surgery. And there are enough people on the planet who need brain surgery that these surgeons can stay very busy and they can charge more money because they specialize because the podiatrist is not gonna go in and do your brain surgery at a lower rate. You can be the brain surgeon of photographers, specialize in the thing, be the best at it, and lots of people will travel in because you are the best around. Wasting money on ads. This is a very common mistake. You're gonna make posts on Facebook and Instagram, and then you're gonna get notifications that say, hey, this post did really well, you should try boosting it. And generally, it's a bad idea. I really wish they wouldn't do that, but they're a business who makes money on ad revenue. So it is what it is. Don't boost posts because Facebook suggests it. You can use organic marketing in a very strategic way, and that is gonna be the last point I make in this video. But rather than waste money on just rando posts, do them with deliberate intention. Have a strategy behind every dollar you spend on the ads. So rather than just like boosting a rando post, make a blog post about, you know, uh, how clients could pick out outfits for their photo shoot. And on that blog post, you'll have an email opt-in for you know, how to pick the perfect outfit for any body type. And then you can write a post about outfit planning for boudoir sessions. And if people respond to it, then you can boost it, drive traffic to your blog post, which has an email opt-in that gets people on your list. And you'll have an automated email sequence in place to nurture them and then convert them into paying clients. That is a great way to spend ad dollars. Build meaningful relationships. This one is huge because you can leverage other businesses, client lists, and audiences for your own mutual benefit. That is the key word to keep in mind. So reach out to every local clothing boutique, every tanning salon, nail salon, hair salon, all the salons, and anyone that serves your client because you can host events together. Like one of the local lingerie shops I have, we will host red carpet events where I'll provide champagne and appetizers. We set up my lights inside their store. People can go in, try on outfits and get photographed in the outfits for free. And 
it's marketing because they get to see how quickly I can get a stranger to look good in front of a camera. And they're gonna love all the outfits that they're photographed in because they look really good. So people tend to buy all of the outfits they're photographed in. So the store owner loves it because more clients come in that day, they buy everything that they try on and I get new clients out of it. It's a win for everyone and it doesn't cost very much money, just whatever appetizers or refreshments you put out. It takes up time, but it's time well spent. Making pointless posts. No one gives a shit about how much you love photography. It's true, they don't. You should love photography. That's a given because you're a photographer. If you don't like photography, you shouldn't be in this game. So when you share a behind the scenes photo and just say, man, we had so much fun on my shoot today. I sure love what I do. It's a waste of space. It's a waste of energy and you are taking time out of people's lives they will never be able to get back again. It's pointless. So instead, tell your client's story. Share testimonials. Talk about behind the scenes stuff. What got you into it? Why do you love it? Don't just tell people that you enjoy it. Don't make posts that say, you know, I'm a local photographer, contact me for more information. Give someone a reason to actually care about your post. Number 11, I haven't been counting for a while, uh, ignoring the email list. That is huge. The email list is the only client-based asset that you own, meaning Facebook tomorrow could decide to shut down. Probably not, but they could. And then your Facebook group is gone, your business page is gone, a marketing platform is gone, and Facebook owns Instagram, so that's probably gonna go away too. All of those things can disappear. Or you're like, that's cool, but I'm on TikTok. Like, that's fine. TikTok is notorious for shutting down boudoir pages and you don't get them back. So you might have had viral videos and built up a huge following, have leads coming in constantly, and then TikTok's like, nah, your photos are too spicy. Peace out, gone. You own your email list, no one can ever take that away from you. Also, let's consider open rates and organic reach. If you have a thousand people who follow your Instagram account and your Facebook page and you make a post, you're lucky to get 4% of your followers to see your content. That's nothing, 4%. With your email list though, if you send deliberate engaging content that's actually relevant and not just a bunch of spammy sales stuff, People will want to open your emails. Like my open rates are about 30%. That is considerably higher than 4%. So it is a much more effective way to stay in touch with people who want to hear from you. Try new lighting setups. I should have moved these lights to try something different for this one, uh, but just pretend that I did. Trying new lighting setups is great because it forces you to be creative and think outside the box that you've put yourself in because we do, we get into routines, we get into habits, and we lose sight of the creativity that is available to us. That's all in here. So one of the things that I started doing was using colored gels, change the color of my lights, or adding a rim light or a background light to change the way that I light my clients. Um, I bought an optical spot from Westcott, and I can do cool projections on the wall behind my clients. I still shoot dark and moody. That didn't change, it's still my brand, but I found new ways to do that or use gobos or cookies to make cool light patterns on your clients, do projections. There's a ton of things that you can do. Add in a second light. You shoot outdoors, that's cool. Start using strobes deliberately. Adding gels on strobes outdoors can also look really, really cool. So just something fun to play with that keeps you creative and not just a victim of the day-to-day -day routine. And point number 13, knowing your camera inside and out without having to think. If I'm gonna shoot, engaging with a client, the least productive thing I can do is be looking down at my screen, trying to figure out how to change my camera settings. I should be able to know. You should be able to adjust your aperture, your shutter speed, your ISO, and your autofocus, or maybe you're probably not using manual focus, but those things without even having to think about it. For example, if I want to darken the background, then I need to lower my shutter speed while keeping my strobes the same. I am able to do that by moving my finger and not having to think about it and know how to get back again. If my client is now moving in the photo, I need to switch to continuous focus mode versus one shot focus mode. And I cannot spend time poking around on my camera trying to figure out how to do that while my client is losing faith in me. Knowing the tool is invaluable to maintaining rapport, to keeping your pace, and to keeping faith with your client. Number 14, my favorite, is outsourcing. This is, again, the difference between a photographer and a business owner. 
As a business owner, you need to spend your time doing the things that create the most leverage. I make money when I'm taking pictures and when I'm selling images to my clients. Yes, I, we can argue that you make money by creating social content, by doing research, by doing practice shoots, by editing your photos. Sure, but you don't make as much. And one of the best exercises I've seen is assigning a dollar amount to every one of the tasks. So me shooting and me selling is a much higher hourly rate than me editing because I can outsource my editing, which I do, and spend more time shooting and selling. Then I make more money and that's a win for everybody. And you can do the same. Someone else can write your social media content, can write your email automations. Somebody can handle all of your scheduling and booking, even your consultations. And you can just spend your time shooting and selling, which you can even outsource those things as well because you're a business owner and you can still continue to do them, but you can make more money by running a business that services more clients if you have more hands on board. Number 15, doing the same poses over and over and over and over and over again. This is like the lighting setups point. You will stifle your creativity if you fall into a routine. So I do about 75% of my shoot pretty consistently with every client and 25% I play. So I base the new poses on my client's wardrobe, their athletic ability, their personality, the music that's on, whatever creative, unique element they bring to the experience, I use that to, to do every shoot a little bit differently. I also have a posing book. I'm gonna link down below. There's 144 poses in there. I tell you exactly how to put your clients in them. I also bring this to every shoot. I use my own book as a resource and I'll just rando flip open to a page like, yeah, let's do this pose today. And it just keeps me doing different poses, thinking differently, and keeps me out of, of a static routine. Number 16 kind of ties back to our pointless post. No one gives a shit about how much you love what you do. Show people you love what you do. Show behind the scenes photos of you having fun, legitimately having fun with your clients and your clients having fun with you. Document how exciting the experience is and how good people feel when they're done and how fulfilling it is for everyone. That is so much more valuable than just making posts or content about how much fun you have. Like, don't tell me you're a really good cook. Let me taste your food. Number 17, no one cares what equipment you're using. They don't. They want to know, am I going to feel good? Am I going to look good? That is all that matters. And too many photographers will build a website and they go, hey, my name is so-and-so. I've been shooting since I was a kid. I've always loved photography. It's always been a passion of mine. Here's what I'm using for my camera. And here's the lenses that I have. This is how many minutes long the photo shoot is. This is how many outfit changes we can do. This is whatever. And it's like a technical list and nobody cares. They wanna know, are they gonna look good? Are they gonna feel good? And how is it gonna change their life? So focus on that. Number 18, not charging enough money. If you're not making at least 1500 bucks a shoot, then you need to reconsider what's going on. And maybe you're like, I've been in the game for three months, I don't feel comfortable charging that much. Totally get it, cool. If you can consistently produce the same quality of work that you are promising your clients, you should up your prices because people will value you more when you value you more. And you know, I have clients who don't even bat an eye. They write me checks for four, five, six thousand dollars and they love it and they tell all their friends to come in and do the same. And then I hear photographers in Facebook land say, I can't even book a shoot for 50 bucks. How would I charge 5,000? Well, if you're telling people your experience is only worth 50 bucks, that's not worth their time. If you don't value it enough to charge more money, then why would they? So as soon as you learn how to value what you do and how to convey that value to your clients, and then lastly, allow them to value what you do also, you will find it easier to make more money doing what you do. Don't be a creeper. I've got another killer video on this about how to create a safe, comfortable environment for your clients. I'll link that down below. Definitely go watch it because shooting boudoir, we have an obligation to our clients to make it the most safe and comfortable environment possible. I mean, really in anything in life, but especially in boudoir because we are already walking on eggshells by doing what we do. So for example, I never do a shoot alone with a client. I always have another woman present. So I have an all female hairstylist, makeup artist team, my assistant, our women when they stick around for the photo shoots. I screen every client before we come in by doing consultations. 
Um, also, the way that I talk to my clients, I don't tell them, you know, stick your ass out for this pose. No, I say bend your booty back or roll your hips forward, uh, elevate your rib cage. Find other ways to respectfully and professionally talk to your clients and make the experience a special one. Number 20, continued education. This one, super duper important. Constantly learning, growing, evolving, changing. Because if you're not growing, you're static and you're not gonna survive. It's that simple. Now, there is a fine line between constantly growing and then using education as a form of procrastination. This is the number one mistake I see with new photographers. They're like, I can't do client shoots yet because I haven't watched 7,000 hours of instructional video. I'm like, cool, watch one hour of video, do five hours of experimenting with someone in front of your camera. My rule is one to 10. So if I go to, I don't know, uh, an entrepreneurship conference and I learn about email automation, I spent two days there, I'm gonna spend two months playing with email automation before I even consider purchasing another course on email automation. If I'm learning new poses, I'm gonna spend an hour reading about new posing strategies and new suggestions, and then I'm gonna spend 10 hours actually shooting that and working on all of those things because I don't want to allow the education to distract me from taking action because you're never gonna to totally be ready. There is no such thing. You just get enough of an idea to get started and then dive in. Number 21, only learning from photographers. Yes, there is a ton of valuable information you can learn from photographers who are doing what you're doing. Hence this channel, for example. But also, I love learning from other entrepreneurs. So I get branding advice from Ryan Smith, the founder of Ugg Boot. I wanna talk about how to use philanthropy for my own business, like the nonprofit that I started this year. I flew to Nashville, Tennessee this year and had breakfast with Jeff Hoffman, the founder of Priceline and Expedia, because he does an insane amount of nonprofit and philanthropic work around the world all year. It's a big part of who he is. So I find people who are doing the things I want to do in whatever industry they're in, and I make them part of my circle. Number 22, creating systems. This is so important. People are like, I don't want systems. I don't want it to feel like I work for corporate, like I'm just a number in Google's payroll, but that's not how it works. Creating systems saves you time and energy and eliminates decision-making. It's wonderful. So for example, if you get an email inquiry on your website from somebody who wants to know how much it costs to book a session with you, I have a document on my computer called email and text message responses. They want to know about pricing? Cool. I copy paste a message that says, hey, I'd love to chat with you more about booking a session and what's included. Let's jump on a quick call. Here's a couple available times or here's a link to my calendar. Let's chat. When it comes to my editing, for example, I wrap up a shoot. I have an email that goes out the next day already scheduled that thanks them for coming in, congratulates them for doing something cool and new. It includes my pricing, it prefaces the reveal that's coming up, and all of the reminders and emails are already written in my own voice so it doesn't sound like a corporate script, and everything is automated. So I don't have to remember to send out these emails and write something from scratch every time. It saves me energy and time to do other things, like, I don't know, take a nap or go get lunch in the middle of the day because I feel like it, because I have the time and flexibility to do so. All right, number 23, ignoring organic marketing. This is the last of the 23 mistakes to avoid, and it's super duper important for several reasons. Because, as I mentioned before with ad dollars, testing your messaging, your images, your offers with organic content will tell you how to spend your marketing money. Also, it is basically free. It does cost you your time, but it doesn't cost you money. And it's going to be a long, slow climb at first, but then it is going to be a consistent and reliable way to get new clients in the door in the long term. So for example, building up a Facebook group is a ton of posting where people aren't going to be responding. Just like creating a YouTube channel or starting a new Instagram profile, you're going to continuously make posts test your messaging, find out what people respond to, adjust the way that you do things, you'll notice a little bit of growth. And then you'll keep going and you'll notice a little bit more growth and you keep going and then the growth 
starts coming in larger and larger chunks. And then you have these consistent follower counts building up, you're getting more inquiries, you're booking more shoots from it, and you haven't had to spend a dollar on it. Then you can spend advertising dollars on the posts that worked really well and grow your business exponentially from there. It's wonderful. And same thing goes with blogging. You might write a bunch of posts in the beginning thinking, I'm a crappy writer, no one is reading this, this doesn't work, but it takes a little bit of time. You're gonna create all these blog posts based on common questions that your clients are asking you, like, what do I wear for a shoot? When should I book a maternity session? What if I've never done this before? Does anyone get nervous before a shoot? And your blog posts are simple. The titles are the keywords of actual things that people are Googling. And after a while, Google will recognize that you are an authority in this topic and start showing you as one of the top results when people search for boudoir related questions in your area. Then you're gonna notice the bookings coming in. It's gonna be a long, slow climb, but you'll get there. And again, you can outsource all of this. Somebody else can write everything for you and manage all of it for you if you don't wanna do it, but it needs to get done. So those are my 23 mistakes to avoid in 2023. And I've already given you some great resources like my posing book or the video on how to create a safe, comfortable environment for your clients, just to name a few. And you're like, that's cool, Mike, but how do I just cut to the front of the line and start making money as quickly as possible? I don't wanna spend all the time to figure this stuff out like you did. Cool, head to boudoirguild.com. I have my courses there where I walk you through step by step exactly how to create all of these systems and ways of generating revenue so that you can bring in multiple six figures too and live the life you've been dreaming of as a professional photographer. You are amazing. We'll see you inside.